So I guess we can start. Um, just uh, some reminder. Um, the, ad, the solution to the homework for has been posted on the Blackboard, so you can check it out. Okay, the TA is grading, so maybe. Grade the assignment. Um, the assignment five, uh, which is uh, hypothesis testing, uh, will be uh, is already on the uh, blackboard. So you have uh, more than ten days because it's a uh, Sunday after the next week. So maybe ten days. So. Uh, after this, there will be another assignment, the last assignment, assignment six. Then there will be no more assignment. This is the conclude the class. So the last assignment will be about ANOVA and regression. So we will be doing the last one. So um, I guess we done with the hypothesis testing. Uh, we can start with ANOVA. And you may ask what's ANOVA. ANOVA, probably you remember, as I said, it's just uh, a generalized version of two sample t tests. Okay. Two sum uh, with, with assumption of equal variance. Okay. So, what basically it said is uh, instead of uh, having a two sample cases, now you have. Uh, more than two, maybe three or four or five or six or seven. Okay. So uh, how do you test that? Uh, the idea is uh, using the F test. Okay. The idea is saying that uh, if the group uh, have a certain meaning, I mean, there's a different between groups, uh, then um, the variance, uh, should not be too much different. But anyway, let, let, let's uh, go to the model and then probably you will know. So, and uh, for the rest of the two topic, right, ANOVA and regression, mainly are all the, a lot of calculations. So you just uh, expect to set a formula and uh, the math behind is not difficult, but it's very complicated. So, uh, but of course, uh, you're not expected to reproduce those because uh, basically the computer calculate everything rather quickly. So the goal is uh, try to again give you some formula. And I hope that I would uh, convey the uh, idea that behind what is assumption that make everything valid, okay? And that would be important because um, the calculation by itself is rather simple. So the main thing is to understand what is assumption behind all those models. Okay. So um, one way ANOVA. Okay. There are two uh, different parts in ANOVA we cover. One is called one way ANOVA, which means that data is divided into one type of grouping, say whether is a say for B school student, whether you're accounting, you're finance, you're IBBA, you are so on and so forth. Okay. And this one type of grouping. But later we talk about every single observation of two type of grouping. Okay. With the say whether you're the major and also you are what was the gender. Okay. So every student may have two different types of grouping. Okay. So that would be a uh, two way no first. So we just focus on the idea of one way and no first. So as I said at the beginning, um, this is about group of data, okay? The thing is uh, uh, in uh, our or other uh, software, they call the uh, grouping is called factor, okay? Say gender is a factor, uh, whether you are boy or girl, or how do you come to school? Right, you come to school by bus, you come to school by subway, you come to school by minibus. Okay, there are many, many ways to or taxi or many, many ways. Okay, 
and um, there's one type of grouping and X is a continuous variable. You can imagine that the depend on grouping, uh, there may be how much income you're making, right? Suppose consider the case you're talking about uh, looking at uh, different majors, okay? How much money they're making, right? The variable X is the, uh, the income, right, of each student and look at each student have the idea of grade, which major they're in. Another example would be consider X is uh, maybe uh, uh, the amount of sales, right? Uh, each day, right? Or each month. And uh, G1 would be the factor, maybe, uh, uh, maybe there's a store in Hong Kong, okay? Location, right? G1 can be location, maybe Hong Kong, Kowloon, you no know, new territory, so on and so forth. Okay, so one is continuous, is X variable. The other G is uh, a, a categorical variable. Okay, it's just uh, before we have two group, right? Before and after. Now we have a C different type of group. So it's a more generalized, more general version. Okay. So, um, so data is either in this pair form. Okay. What's the number and what's the group? Okay. And sometimes uh, you will see them uh, grouped in this uh, very long and complicated way. And uh, this notation is used at, uh, uh, in the book, unfortunately, okay? This is the more general idea you think, right? You tell me the number and tell me which group you're in. But uh, here data is like this, okay? Here is... Uh, uh, each observation uh, has two number. The first number tells you which group they're in. Okay, here is the group one. Uh, group one has first observation. For example, group one is maybe this is a store sales data. This is the store number one. Okay, the sales from uh, say day one. Okay, and this is still store number one sales of day n one. Okay. And so on and so forth. This is the store, last store, store number C, first observation to the uh, last observation NC. Okay. So, in general, each observation is uh, denoted by XIJ. Okay. So, this is uh, what the data looks like. This is the symbol we are using. Okay. This is the book they are using this symbol. But uh, you should think what easier to think is this uh, ideas from this data. And sometimes it might be easier to think this in Excel format, okay? So each column represents a data in each group, okay? So this is usually how we collect data, right? So the first column will be, uh, say, look at the sales, okay, for store one. X11 will be sales of store one at day one, right? The second observation, X12, the X12, okay? will be the second observation, the second sales data from day two, okay? And the data you collect may not be a balance, which means that uh, number of days you collect for each day, for each store, may not be the same, okay? Another example, you can imagine this kind of data, as I said, is uh, the uh, earnings data, the income data by say major, right? Say suppose this is G1 is the group, say business school student, right? And G2 will be uh, say student from uh, engineering, right? And so on and so forth, right? And next one, one may be the, uh, how much uh, a B school student earn, the first guy, right? One, two will be the second B school student, so on and so forth, right? And G2 one will be the first, the first observation for engineering student, okay? So and so forth, okay? I say, okay, what data we're looking at, okay? If you focus the data on only two groups, right? And that's what we learned in the two sample case, okay? Now we generalize to C sample, that's so N sample. Uh, I think there's a typo here, this would be C. That's okay, GN is fine. Uh, 
Okay. So we are a little bit more mathematical because I want to make it more clear. So the model we have is we are assuming the data. Okay, each observation follow a normal distribution. Okay. So you may ask why we assume normal. Actually, we have been assuming normal, but probably didn't read the proof, but you notice. Uh, when we talk about uh, everything we talk about t-test, actually we have assumed normal. Okay, so just go back to the, probably I should emphasize again, because uh, because this this year we didn't go over the proof, so I probably have to uh, emphasize a little bit here again, is uh, when we do hypothesis testing, go back to here, Okay, for testing. Uh, we said uh, there are two types of procedure. Either we do Z test or T test, right? And how, why we can do Z test, right? Because uh, that is due to central limit theorem. We said when the sample size is large, no matter, it doesn't really matter what kind of the underlying distribution is, the sample mean is always a bell curve and normal distribution. Right, so that is the, uh, that's why if we are happy to assume that uh, the, uh, we know this one, so that's why we can do sigma, okay? But however, if we are not willing to assume this, okay, we're not willing to assume the sigma, we have to use t-test, but uh, there's no free lunch for doing that. Uh, if we consider t-test, we need to assume that the underlying distribution is normal, okay? So there is uh, uh, some trade-off between the assumption you are making. So let me emphasize here, uh, maybe I have a whiteboard here, okay? Just to reiterate that uh, the assumption need, need to be made. Uh, kind of right. I think it's wrong with this. Interesting. I can use my hand, but I cannot use the pen. But okay, I use my hand then. That's where we are. So if you have the Observation X, okay, doesn't really matter what it looks like. It's very weird to teach it with finger. But uh, so that means the central limit theorem said when the sample size is large, okay, you have a bell. Okay. And if you know sigma, then you can do the t test, you can do the high interval estimation, that's no problem. Okay. We don't need extra assumption. The only assumption we need for this is we have a large sample, okay? As long as we're happy to assume we know the sigma, okay? So I hope that is very clear, there's no, so as long as we are happy to assume that sigma square, we know it, not a big deal, no problem. But the problem is, okay? If you are not willing to assume the no sigma, okay? Then we have to rely on this guy, right? which we call T, okay? But for this to be a T, okay? Uh, we need to assume that this guy, the original data is normal, okay? So for everything we talk about T, okay? We need to assume that the underlying thing is normal. And the question is uh, how often or how likely this is to be true, okay? In general, it's not possible to check in general. I mean, of course, there's some way to ch check, but we need to make some assumption. And actually central limit theorem tell us that uh, this can be normal, right? If what the data you see is actually some, some mean, right? To say IQ is an average of many, many things, right? 
I mean, how 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 much food you eat, what is your DNA of your parents, what may be your peers who you know, how hard you work, right? Those those kind of things, right? That's why you you can say, right? Because the thing you see in the real world is average of certain stuff, right? And there's a lot of things combined together. Okay, you safely can say uh, the things are normal, it's not a big deal, okay? But uh, there's assumption there, and certainly there are things that are not normal, okay? And you may ask, what happened if it's not normal? Uh, then we need more advanced technique uh, that to be learned in more advanced class, okay? For the moment, let's uh, stay in the world that uh, either you have two way, either you have assumed, we have to assume we know the sigma square, or we say underlying is uh, normal, then we can use T, okay? And if you are okay to do it, you can, if you are not happy to do it, you can do Z. That's fine, okay? Say so for all the two sample tests we learn, we have to rely on T, right? Besides proportion, proportion we have happy, we can use Z. Because proportion, when you know the mean, we can estimate the variance, right? Because if the mean is pi, the variance pi times one minus pi. So that's not a big deal. But uh, for other than the proportion, uh, we have a lot of trouble. So we either have to assume we know sigma square, or we have to assume the underlying, what you're observing the population is normal, okay? Of course, uh, which one is more reasonable assumption? Uh, it depends on how you like it, but uh, I think in most cases, you assume the underlying disposition is normal. It's not a too big a problem in most cases, okay? So that's why when we talk about ANOVA and no regression, when we have to do inference, uh, we have to rely on normal, okay? There is, uh, there's, uh, it's not easy to uh, do away with normal for our uh, setting. Of course, uh, when you try to learn more, then uh, we can, we may be able to dispense with this assumption, but uh, for the introductory class, uh, with the stick with the idea that either you have to be normal or you have don't, right? Because you know, uh, normal may not be the case, right? Because you show there's an exponential, there's a Poisson, there are many, many kind of uniform, there are many, many things can happen. Uh, but, uh, but I hope it is clear that what we are doing is uh, we need to assume uh, a certain type of uh, normal, normal, okay? So here, it says, it just said the following, right? It's the same way. The data each observation you generate, okay? Follow a, each observation you have, okay? Follow a normal distribution, okay? So this is the classical model, okay? And this, what it actually said, it just the following, okay? It's just no different from saying that, uh, uh, the following, okay? Before we have said, uh, hey, my kind of right. Before we have the following, right? Is X, I, right? Many, many things is also normal, right? X1 is also normal. X2 is normal. X3 is normal, right? So that is what we call the underlying assumption, right? And then we can do basically every observation is simple random sample, actually they look the same shape. Okay, they're the same mean, same variance, right? That's how you can do the t-test, okay? And if you, you have the two population, right? Then what, you, what you're saying is uh, in one population, they always draw from the same normal and the other population, they would draw also in a normal, but may have different mean, okay? May have different variance, okay? So now we generalize this means maybe, right? Uh, this may be here, right? And this X2 may come from the other one. X3 maybe look, doesn't look the same, but all the bell, all the bell curve, okay? So that is meaning of uh, X1 uh, have a normal, right? X11 has normal with mu one, okay? And sigma, 
And the one thing is later you will see is uh, even though they are drawing from different mean, we just we assume that they have the same uh, variance. Okay, that means that that's a, all the observation are drawn from the same bell curve. Okay, but different location bell curve. Okay, you're just saying that first group may be the business school student. Okay, everyone the income of B school student has the same bell curve. Okay, the same mean and same variance. Every student from engineering school student, right? From engineering school is another bell curve. Okay, but they have the same variance, but only different mean. Okay, that's what ANOVA is doing. Okay, we assume that uh, every observation is drawn from uh, the bell curve. Okay, so that is every look that this is every one. The sigma is same, okay? No matter which observation, the way I'm saying, okay? And each one will be realized, it depends on the group I, okay? And this is um, the notation we said, right? The xij have a normal distribution with mu i and sigma square. And this is usually you see in a mathematical expression, okay? This said, uh, this is sum of two parts. This mu i is a non-random, it's a constant term, mu i, okay? This is a constant term, okay? And this is a random term, okay? This constant term, because you take, just take this out, okay? Just rewrite this because this is the, uh, we write the random variable, okay? As a sum of a constant term and a uh, random variable. This is a very uh, useful way to do it uh, because uh, you can make the, uh, this one have a, zero mean okay and see this zero mean thing actually we call the random error okay so what you are saying is just like uh fep school student have some average salary mu i right and why you see each p school student have different income is because of some random error we don't model it it's outside the model you can imagine that maybe some student have a, a better uh, soft skills or maybe they have a different network, or maybe his parents is a very rich, okay? So and so forth, okay? And there are different uh, uh, thing, okay? And because of this, we can also rewrite it, okay? We write the following. This is the average, say, look at the income data. This is a, maybe the average, income for B school student, right? If I is the B school or FH income for the engineering, if this group is the engineering, okay? And we can rewrite the following, okay? Usually we call it uh, the average income, okay? Of say B school student can be written as the average income of the uh, undergrad, the undergraduate university average, okay? So you look at the data of say CHK and mu will be the average income of CHK and alpha i will be the additional we call treatment effect okay or the additional effect for the uh uh for the uh for whether CHK right has as a B school student uh uh additional skill premium maybe you can say uh mu is the uh, average income and mu alpha i is the a B school student premium, right? And this alpha I can be positive negative, right? Maybe B school student earn more and social science or arts earn a little bit less, right? Or medical school or law school will earn uh, way much more, okay? And this average R will be zero, okay? You may ask why we introduce all this notation, right? Uh, the reason is uh, we are doing hypothesis testing on these, okay? And the main thing we care, right, of course, is whether alpha i is zero or not, right? And this is the treatment effect, right? Before you have two group, right? And the alpha is as to the treatment effect, right? If you consider group one is those people who have no vaccine, right? And group two is people with uh, maybe two sort of vaccine, right? Maybe you have more than two, right? You have three vaccine, four vaccine, a different brand, right? Uh, then 
you want to see if uh, there's a difference between the treatment, right? Whether the thing actually make a difference. Okay, so that is the idea behind what we're doing. We want to do a high process testing on alpha i. Okay, the model. Okay, let me repeat the model again. I because uh, this is very important because uh, we're not talking the model anymore. Okay. It's important to understand what is going on here, okay? What's going on here is you, what you have is a data, okay? The data can be divided into several groups, okay? Depend grouping, okay? And each group, you have many, many observations, okay? You want to see the grouping actually have some meaning, okay? Actually, different groups have different behavior, okay? Another exa example, as I said, is you want to see where they say the antibody level, right? Maybe different, depend on what kind of vaccine you're taking or how many mix of vaccine, right? Maybe one group is you just give him one dose of, of say, Sinovax. Say the other group is one dose of bio BioNTech and then one dose of J&J, &J, so on and so forth, okay? And the other group, maybe you mix have two, two doses of the same brand and the other group may be two different doses of different brand and so on and so forth, the main, main group, okay? And the question you're asking, right, is a very intuitive one is whether you are uh, taking more doses is going to give you more vaccine, more antibody, more protection or not, right? Or mixing is it better, so on and so forth, right? So it's asking whether uh, the, uh, there's a different vision group, okay? Where the mean is different, okay? We assume that they all have the same variance. Okay, they are, we just say, say ask, we are asking if they, are, uh, they have the bell curve, okay? They have the same variance, same size of the bell, bell curve. Uh, we are asking whether they're at the same location or different location, okay? In the other word, you're looking at the case of income data, right? Then you're asking whether the B school student is making is it making more money than uh, slow science? Is it making more than engineering? Okay, so and so forth. Okay, so that is the idea. Okay, I hope I conveyed the important message that we have to assume normal. So this is a classical model, and of course you ask what happened is not normal. Uh, then we have to learn more to know more, and at that stage we have to assume normal. Okay. The bell curve is something we cannot escape, okay? As I said, when we want to know whether the mean is the same for each group, right? So this is one one test. Okay, this is general, as I said, this generalized uh, t-test, right? If you just have two groups, okay? That is just t-test, you can just do t-test. And actually you can show that in when the case of uh, two, actually the same as the t-test, okay? When you're more than two, of course, it's more complicated, but I'm just trying to show you that it's a uh, same as the T. Then alternatively asking the, the treatment effect, is it same, okay? Is it all zero, right? Because treatment effect zero means uh, mu i is equal to mu, so everything is same, okay? So this uh, same, as I said, right? The first one is whether uh, you have new medicine, right? These days, right? Probably you know it as a COVID, right? That's a new medicine. And you want to see whether the new medicine is going to make people recover sooner or later, right? So that's a two, I think now we have two type of COVID uh, medicine, at least two new things like Macric and also the uh, Visor, right? You want to see whether they are going to be better, right? And then example, maybe you want to look at marketing example, maybe uh, the different marketing channel or the different consumer type, right? People from different, country, you're asking whether they are giving you the same money, right? And if the case, then you want to uh, decide what to do, right? I think probably the recent case is about the Hai Di Lao, it's a Hai Dai Lo, it's uh, going to close a lot of stores, right? And they decide to close, I think, 300 stores, uh, because, uh, and then how they do, right? You have to look at how much money each store is making, right? And then see whether which one is doing better or worse. Group them into the group and then see whether you want to close some of them, okay? And how to test this kind of question, we'll do F test, okay? We just assume this is the case, okay? The main idea is, okay? 
um, because they have the same, we assume they have same variance for each group, okay? And that means that if you, if this null hypothesis is true, okay? Then your data should be concentrated on, because this, you know this, they, they are in the same bell, right? Because you, they're, they're bell, you, you just say in different group have different locations of the bell curve, okay? Under the null, it just say they all fall the same bell, right? So the question will be if, they're actually in the same bell, then the variance of this thing cannot be too large. Right, because, uh, let me draw it. Do I, if the, uh, before, I mean, later you will see the ideas like this. Intuitively, right, you are saying every data, okay? This is your null hypothesis, right? The alternative hypothesis will be something here, there may be data is here, some data is there, okay? And other data, uh, I should, I have to should have same, same variance, right? But anyway, so they should look, okay? Under the now it is blue, okay? But in fact, it may be a uh, different color one, okay? And then if you calculate the variance, right, because if they're following the same mean, then cannot be, uh, the data cannot be too wary, right? Different groups should not have different variance, okay? And we compare variance. Remember how we do the variance in the last class is you compare two different variants, right? Two different variants are different, that can be same, okay? So the idea here is look at different group of data, okay? And look at the variance to do comparison. Okay, but we'll be more clear later. Okay, but let's let us calculate one by one, then you will see uh, what's the rationale behind. Okay, so that basically just we are trying to see whether this blue thing is correct or actually we have the red, orange, and purple. Okay, so we uh, I'm sorry that we should we have a lot of uh expression that we don't uh explain that much, okay? The first one is very simple. It just, uh, N is total number of observation, okay? What it says is just adding all observation, okay? For each group, group is I from first to the end, each observation add up, okay? That is overall grand mean, okay? Just basically you just go back to the, uh, oh, sorry. You go back to the beginning. What it said is grand mean is just adding every single observation there divided by total number of them, right? So if you excel, we just sum of all these things and divided by the total count, okay? So this is the overall mean, okay? So that is nothing new, just the mean, right? There's nothing, nothing deep, but just mean, okay? But now we have another thing is just the overall mean is just you, you assume they have the same mean. This is the uh, number you have, okay? Under the now, this is to be the mean for everything, okay? And the alternative is saying that they are not the same mean, so you have to calculate the mean for each group, right? Basically, just saying that the average income of the data you have, say, and basically this is, what is this? Is for each group I, you add them for, uh, for all the observation, okay? So what it means is you go back to here, it means that just the whole column with the column mean, okay? The first, say suppose the one, you just, uh, you just this mean of this guy, right? This gives you one, right? If you average all this, it gives you X bar two, so on and so forth, okay? So this is the idea of a uh, uh, mean of the group. Is that okay? So just the horizon, the vertical thing, okay? Now we have two definition, mean of the overall and mean of individual, right? And intuitively, okay, if everything the same, okay, then you don't have to test the hypothesis, you're done, right? So the question is whether the group mean, right? Is it very close to the, uh, grand mean, 
Okay, if the gram mean the same as overall, then you're done, right? Because there's no difference. Okay, so the idea is what to test whether they're different. Okay, so they, let me repeat the goal. What we're doing is the overall mean is looking at the meal, right? It's measure is a is a is the best estimate for the meal, and x i bar is estimate is an estimator for meal i. Okay, just just to remind you. Okay, this x bar, right? Is basically measuring this spec mu, right? And this x i bar is actually talking about uh, mu i. Okay, one is x bar, one is x bar i, right? So, is that okay? This one, okay. Now, let me show the example that is trivial, right? Just like we have. Data is like this, right? The overall mean is just adding single, every single observation over how many of them, okay? And mean of group one is just adding all the four, divided by four and group two and group three, okay? Oh, I forgot to have a bar here, so there should be a bar. Sorry. There should be bar here. Okay? Is that okay? Now, the next thing is, okay, we are trying to look at uh, how the compared and comparing variance, that's why we call ANOVA, okay? So here we have a rather complicated idea, okay? But the idea is uh, not too crazy, okay? You just uh, try to look at it, uh, Carefully, okay. So the first one is we call SST, we call sum of square, SS is sum of square. So SST, the first one is not difficult to see. What you're doing is what you what you're doing is uh, for each observation, okay, you minus the overall mean, okay, and you take square, you add them all up. So which means that you look at the overall mean x bar, each observation look at distance and square at them all. Okay, that's why sum of square total. Okay, so just there's a definition, just basically this: how far away for each observation from the overall mean. Okay, is that clear? What is this about? Okay. And the second one, okay? The second one is a little bit trickier, okay? The second one is, instead of talking about each observation, okay? You replace each observation by its own mean, this group mean, okay? The group mean, okay? So, this is actually more or less us looking at how each group, okay, the mean is away from the grand, the overall mean. All right? So the first one is asking how each individual is different from the overall, okay? The second one is asking how each group is different from the center. Right, because this is the group is asking you instead of talking about uh, each one, they're talking about how each uh, group mean is away from the overall mean. Okay. And the last one, okay, is called the within group, is uh, each observation is how much they're different from. Uh, is group mean. Okay. So uh, we don't prove the math, but turn out to be uh, the first one is equal to the sum of the 
second two. Okay, so let me repeat this. It's a little bit uh, more. It's a little bit tricky. Okay, so here we are asking uh, the following. Right, it's asking each observation from the overall grant. Okay, so that actually is not nothing terribly difficult. This it's very much like the variance thing, right? But just the numerator of the variance, right? The first guy just the variance of the the data set. Right, but you, if you don't talk about divided by what is it, what should be divided, right? Uh, because we will talk about this in the next slide how to you to divide something, but uh, this is the uh, the, the numerator of the variance part, right? It's the variance of each observation, right? It's called sum of the square, okay? And okay, actually, this can be divided in two parts, okay? You are uh, what you're doing is First, you are asking us to calculate replacing each observation by its group mean. Okay. And you calculate it to the overall grand. Okay. And the other one is called SSW. It's asking how each data is equal to its own. So we can, maybe you can I try to see if I can convince you this is the case by drawing here. Maybe drawing the, let's see if that can help you to visualize it, okay? So here are the overall grand, okay? Uh, so this is overall grand here, okay? And the data may be like this, I don't know. Maybe I should draw this guy at the same, right? Like what I'm doing. Okay. So the SST sum of square is just asking each observation. Okay, so this observation say, uh, let's do the blue observation, right? The observation here, okay? So your grind, overall grind is here, then you just, from here, you just count the distance to here, all right? So for each observation, you calculate distance from the, to the center, right? And square, add up everyone, okay? And what the other SST and SSW, okay? Uh, so, this is called the distance of all this is uh, SST, right? Square this, okay? And the other is called SSG. SSG is for each mean you from the center, okay? SSG will be this guy, say. This is the mean of some group looking at distance for this, okay? Each observation for all the green, okay? I'm not taking this. I'm asking you how their own mean, okay? The group mean is different from the center, okay? For each data here, I don't care. I replace it by the center and calculate distance here. Okay? This is called S, S, I, S, S, G. Yes, S, S, G. Okay, and the last one, we calculate this is SSW, okay? So basically you can see this data point from here to the center is called SST, okay? From this point to its own mean is SSW, and here's SSG, okay? So that's why maybe I erase this guy, maybe easier to see. So if you take each observation, right? To the mean, you calculate square, everything is SST. You replace it by the mean from the mean to the center 
is SSG for each observation to its group mean is called SSW. Okay, so we will say SST is equal to SSW plus SSG. Okay, uh, is that clear? What this is the meaning? I hope this can help you. Okay. Uh, So let me finish this example before we give a break. Okay. So how to calculate SST, SSW, SSG, just give an example quickly. Okay. We have, uh, uh, I think I again missed the bar here. Sorry. So we have the data here, one, one, two, four, and all the data, right? And you can calculate the overall mean, mean of group one, group two, and group three. We have to do it in the last previous slide. Okay. Then what we're going to do is to calculate SST. All right. SST is each observation one minus four, one minus four, two minus four, four minus four, three minus four, four minus four. So everything minus four and take a square, give you 70. Okay. Is that clear how you calculate SST? Okay. Is that clear how you calculate SST? Okay, and the next slide we'll be doing is uh, SSW and SSG. S is a group, right? The group difference, okay? So group difference is just, you don't use one, one, two, four. You replace everything by two. This replace everything by five, okay? So that's why you see two, 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 five, 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 five. Okay. So just to remind you what is going on here is this guy is overall mean, right? This is overall mean four. Okay. This is the mean of group one. Okay. Five is the mean of group two. This five is the mean of group three. Okay. Here I have all the observation is the same for every group. Uh, we don't have, we don't need this assumption, but I just make the calculation easier, but uh, you can allow it to be different. Okay. And SSW is the uh, sum of square within group. Okay. So this is, as I get, this is X bar one. Okay. This is first observation. So it's X one, one, right? So this is, X one two, this is X one three, this is X one four. So there's no bar here. Right? And the two are X bar one. Okay. So basically just subtract each observation by its group mean. Okay. SSW, it just, uh, just to uh, remind you how to do it, it just, right? You just, this minus the group means two and square, one minus two, two minus two, uh, four minus two and square for each. This is three minus five, four minus five, okay? So that is how you uh, do all this calculation, okay? So that's nothing new, but you have bunch of sum of squares, okay? And then we will try to compare this quantity, right? Because uh, uh, later you will see why we care about this, okay? And we will do some division. And after the break, we will tell you this guy is in DF test, okay? But uh, before we give you the intuition, uh, let's have a break of 10 minutes, I think. Uh, 9.30 and then we will, uh, we can, we can come back and talk about that. Okay. So let's have a break.
Hi. So, um, what we are doing now is um, next is trying to divide because we have the sum SST, SSG, and SSW. Okay. So, what uh, actually we are doing here is SST, right? Actually, there's nothing but actually just. Uh, the standard sample standard error, right? And that n observation, that's why you divide it by n minus one, okay? And basically can, they call the mean square error and you can consider that is one of the way that you estimate sigma, right? This is, est this is the estimator for sigma square, okay? That's the, and when we to estimate sigma square, okay? And the, actually there's another way to estimate sigma square, right? You just, you just uh, calculate the arbitrary, you calculate average, right? Looking at the mean of each group and uh, minus overall mean, right? Basically you replace each observation by its group average, right? You calculate that, okay? And the number of variation you have is just C minus one. Uh, the, the idea is that actually the only did how many different value you have, right? Actually only C different value, right? Because each group is, re, each, all the observation replaced by group mean, okay? So actually indeed you only have C different value, right? So that's why it's C minus one. And this is also an estimate for sigma square, right? Because you just, what you're doing is what, right? Go back to this, what you do as, what you're doing in the, let's go, go back to here. SSG is just each observation, the mean replaced by the group mean and D different from the overall, right? And actually they only see different number of value because C is number of group, right? And you calculate the difference and overall this overall by that, actually that is only a, a C different value, okay? So that's why this is also uh, related to the uh, 
sigma square, okay? So one of the uh, good uh, estimator for sigma square, okay? It's in some sense, I mean, of course, there's some different, but uh, uh, you may say it's a, uh, related to uh, some way to the sigma square, okay? And go back to here, okay? This is actually talking about the, uh, how each, right? We've got SSW is this guy, right? Is this guy, right? So within each group, you have, uh, uh, here, I think I mix, us, mix some, I think I mix some, okay? So we have a uh, N minus C number of left. Uh, the reason why is because the total number of N, right? But you already fixed uh, C mean, right? Because these are all fixed already, okay? So that's why uh, what you left is N minus C, okay? The denominator is a little bit difficult to explain uh, because that is, you need to understand why the chi-square distribution, but uh, uh, just, we stick with it, just you just take some division, okay? It's called MSW, okay? And what we're trying to say is under the now, okay? Later, let's see the next page, okay? Under the, what hypothesis, uh, this is calculation for us, okay? This calculate the SST, SSG, and SSW. And this, you have 12 minus one, right? Because 12 number and group, the three group, so it's two minus one. And this is uh, 12 minus three, okay? So the, the key here is we want to check if all the mu is the same, okay? And that actually means this mu under the null hypothesis, okay? Actually this guy and this guy uh, should be measuring the same thing, okay? Because they are just a proxy of mu, okay? So it somehow it means that uh, you want to compare the variance between MSG and MSW, okay? They shouldn't be too much different, okay? And let me repeat the statement again, okay? You should expect the variance, okay? Somehow, some, this math, these two measure, MSW and MSG, okay? Should not be different, right? If they have the same mean, because they are also, both of two are measuring the distance, right? Because, Where is the thing, right? Because MSW, right, is asking you each data different from its center of the, its own group, right? And SSG is asking how this related to this one, right? So they should not be uh, too much different from each other, right? So, that's the idea of the test, right? You can see the MSG over MSW should follow a F like this, okay? So of course, uh, as I said, the F you can reverse the MSW, MSG doesn't really matter, right? You can be reverse up and down, then you will change the, uh, uh, the degree of freedoms you use for the F, right? But that is the, the, the main idea is comparing MSW and MSG, okay? So basically just within group and across group, right? MSG is uh, within this with across group and MSW is within group, right? So just to remind you again, what it's doing is asking the following is this guy, you're comparing this variance, okay? You are trying to see how this variant, are they same? or different, right? Of course, this is SSG you to divide it. How many of them, right? And basically what it said is, uh, they shouldn't be too much different from each other if they have the same mean. 
okay? If the same mean, then they are measuring the same thing, right? Because X bar should, X bar I should also be uh, also close. The mean of X bar I, right, should also be uh, mu, right? That's the same thing, okay? Should not do much different from overall graph. Is that clear? So let me, let me repeat again the idea, right? If they're the same mean, right? Each the group, each group, the mean, right, should also uh, close to the growth of grand mean, right, with a similar variance, some variance here, and for each group, you can measure the variance, right? You have the same variance, okay? If they all belong to the same overall mean, they should then be. Uh, you can compare their variance, okay? It's hard to say without going to the proof. Actually, the proof is like this, but uh, I think it's not easy to uh, do it without turn the proof. But uh, but more or less, the idea is uh, uh, is what we have. Okay. So do note that this is a uh, uh, a lot of math here, but do note that this is a right tail test. Okay, this is a right tail test. Okay. Um, so you will reject if uh, this guy is too large. Why? Look at here. Okay. This is the SS divided by this SSG, right? This SSW, right? So SSG is measure each group, is it how much different from the overall mean, right? So if they are really different, this guy will be very large, right? If they're actually different, very far away from each other, right? Then the SSG will be very large, right? But SS, SSW will not be affected by this because everything has the same variance. Is that clear what is going on? Let me, let me repeat because I think this is very important. I didn't understand what's going on here, right? SSG is measuring how each group mean different from the center, right? And if everything have the same overall mean, this guy should be small, okay? And what is your comparing, comparing within each group, how much the variance is it, right? And this guy is the same across each group, okay? So if they actually have the same overall mean, uh, SSG should not be big, actually should be very small, right? But uh, turn out if SSG is too big, then you cannot say they have the same mean. So that's the idea. Is that okay? Because if they're not th th too much different, SSG should not be very different, right? Because they're the same mean, SSG should be very close to the overall mean. but. Uh, turn out to be very different than this how you compare. Is that okay what we are doing? Uh, I hope I convey the message. Okay. If there's no question, then, okay. This is, look at the data here. Okay. So, um, there's data in the free group one, one, two, four, three, four, five, eight, and two, four, five, six, nine. And we have shown this is the case. Okay. So what you're going to see is the MSG over MSW. Okay. And this is the F statistics. Okay. And you can check. If this guy is because remember this is a one tail, right? This is a one tail different from the compared variance, right? This is just uh, you are doing one 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 tail test, okay? So that's why you're asking if this is the case, okay? It's more than uh, compared to critical value, okay? The critical value is c minus one over, and this nine, right? This is. C minus one is A minus C. Number of group minus one, uh, 
is free group minus one. Okay. This is C number group minus one, right? And this is N minus C. N is four times three is 12. 12 minus three is nine, right? Do note that with alpha, okay? So just to remind you here, right? F is like this, okay? It's a one tail test. So you only reject when it's here, okay? And this is F two and nine, okay? And, and the data you have is like something like 2.347, okay? And you want to calculate this area, right? And this is just F, this, of course, one minus 2.34, right? Two and nine, okay? And this, okay, would give you the number, the p-value is this guy, okay? So it's 50%, then you do not reject. Maybe we can uh, go to the Excel and show you that's the case, right? One minus F this, 2.34, 2 and 9. Ah, I forgot the true. Okay. I should have the true here. Okay. So it's um, the formula. Is here. Okay. So that is look at the area on the right hand side. Okay. So that is how we do. Okay. So because of you're comparing the mean of each group to the center, right? This is supposed to be small, right? You compare it with the variation within the group, okay? If the same mean, the variation of course the group should be small relative to the variation of the mean uh, within the group, okay? So that's the MSG over uh, uh, MSW. Is that clear? So do note that the assumption here we have to make is the variation across the group is the same thing, okay? This is usually satisfied, but uh, it may not be the case, but uh, that's the assumption we're making. Okay. So of, of course you can calculate the critical value, which is 29.05. Okay. Um, so the critical value will be inverse uh, because you want 5% on the end. So it's 0.95 and 2 and 9. Okay. So this is a critical value. We only have one critical value because uh, we want the variation between the group is small, right? So it's one sided. So that would be for something, right? So this is the green one is way beyond bigger than the two, so you can't reject. Okay. So, so is that okay for this one? So that's the idea, the graph. Is there any question? Any question? Okay, you may worry about so much calculation. So I just quickly show you in the Excel, you can do it very quickly, okay? Just use the add-in and then you're done, okay? Sorry that we are not in the lab, but it's just one step. So I hope there's no problem with we, even if we don't uh, do it in the lab, I hope that's okay. Uh, and now I load the data analytics. So go to the file uh, option, Add in, and I have NS2 pad loaded. Okay, I hope this is 
clear from the last class, okay? So let me open another one and I've I got a data here, okay? Let me use the data in the in the uh, in the here, right? Then to confirm that is right. One, one, two, four, three, four, five, eight, and two, four, five, nine. So don't worry. We just do one step. So that's nothing, nothing to be worried. Okay. So this is data. So basically just do the data analysis. And we have ANOVA, single factor. Okay. And input range will be just input here. Just highlight everything there. And the data here is grouped by column because each column is a number, okay? I mean, this uh, Excel thing is already in the slide already at the end, okay? So there's nothing, nothing special here. There's label in the first row. You decide where to output. Maybe put output here and then you're done. Just wait a bit. Why? We're surprising it dies. Supposed to come in in one second, but. Oh, what happened? Uh, uh, let me do it again. I'm sorry. Shouldn't be an issue, but. What can you do when you have something like this? Okay. So let me quickly do it again. So we have X1, X2, X3. Uh, the data here is one, one, two, four, three, four, five, eight, two, four, five, nine. And we just load the load the add in there, add in. Okay. So data analysis. And over again, the whole data range. Okay. We have label in the first row, output. Hopefully this time it will work. Hmm. Not really. I don't know why, but um, so I can go to the, I don't know what happened to this Excel. But I see it just uh, as you can see, I don't know why it doesn't work. Maybe this, the Excel has some problem. So this is data I have here, right? And at the end, you will see that this is the Excel, right? Quickly come out this one. What happened is not, oh, it's here, okay. I think just the, this computer is very slow, okay? So uh, this is the count, this is sum, this average of the variance, okay? So this is SS, uh, SSW, this is SSG, okay? Okay, and then you can SS, uh, dub, SS uh, within group, this is a, a between group, okay? This is SST, degree of freedom, MS, W and SF, uh, and then it's an F and then P value and same critical value. Okay, so this is uh, same as we do. Okay, so that's why you don't really need to know it. Basically, at the end of the day, you just need to know the last number, right? Or the uh, P value, right? You cannot reject or not reject. Okay, so that would be the goal. Of course, you need to know how you get it, right? Because all the data is already there. Okay, you know. Suppose, uh, I think last year I give you this and I ask people to calculate, but I uh, probably not repeating this question, but uh, so, but that is the, how you can read all the, all the data, right? Is that clear, uh, all this? So this is between within.
so uh, within group, between group, okay? So this is uh, uh, this MSB. If you look at the, I think look at the textbook, they have also this called as MSB. Uh, just to let you know the ANOVA, uh, the problem of ANOVA, you read different textbook is a uh, different textbook have different uh, definition of MS what, okay? MST is very clear, but MS, sometimes it's MSA, MSB, they don't really know what they're talking about, okay? So just make sure that uh, you understand what they're doing. But I think you understand the idea, right? I hope you understand the idea is uh, you're trying to see if they have same mean, the MSG is to be small, okay? So that is the main thing, okay? If they have the same mean, MSG should be small, SSG or MSG should be small, but the SSW should not be, it's an factor by whether you are the, having the uh, null hypothesis or the alternate hypothesis, right? The same, because the same variance only the mean are same or not, okay? Is that clear uh, what we are doing? Okay. So there's nothing but just a bunch of equations, but uh, I hope I convinced you this is the right model to use. Uh, and uh, perhaps I didn't say it here, but uh, when you have, uh, you can actually check for the math if only two group, okay? Uh, this F will be, uh, same as t by square, okay? t squared is f. Actually, we do it, we will say it when we talk about regression, okay? Which is a general case uh, of this ANOVA, but uh, t and the f are closely related, okay? Basically, the, this is generalization of the uh, t's, okay? Anyway, if there's no question, then I'm going to fast forward to two-way ANOVA. Because again, we only have nothing new, but just a bunch of uh, assumptions. And then we want to give you the test. It's again the F test again, okay? The idea is very similar. When you're two way, the same thing, okay? It's asking that you are whether they're different from the overall mean, okay? And is it going to be zero or not? Okay, the same, actually the same, very same idea, okay? I hope I can convince you this is the case. Is there any question about the one way ANOVA? Okay. If you are, is it, if it's clear, then I will go to the two way. Okay. So two way ANOVA is just uh, uh, a very similar idea, but the data now you have two groups. Oh, but before we start, I just want to remind those who arrived late is uh, the assign, uh, we have uh, the assignment for solution uploaded to the Blackboard and uh, assignment five will be, uh, you have 10 days, more than 10, I guess. Actually it's uh, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. We have 12 days indeed to do the assignment five, so. So just a no, second two ways are over. Two way and over is actually nothing but just every data observation is you have two kind of grouping, okay? So for example, you can imagine we are maybe uh, a student in CHK, when I look at the income earning after the graduate, you can divide them into which kind of, uh, what school they in, right? Which faculty they in? Faculty of Arts, Faculty of Social Science, B school, uh, law school, uh, medical school, right? And they may have same different or same income. The second group you can imagine that you can take maybe gender, right? Or if you don't like gender, you can talk about college, right? Is it CC people earn more than UC? Is it more than NA or more than UC? Right, this kind of idea, okay? So that's a, for each data, X1, okay? It's the first data point. You can tell whether they're from group one up to C and the other group is one up to R, okay? 
So that means that the C different A group pain and R different of B group pains. Okay. So basically, you can imagine this a contention table, right? There's two way. Okay. Each each guy can be each observation can be there are two kind of category. Okay. And for everything we do here, we just make our life easier. We don't want to make our notation very messy. So we will call this is a balanced data, which means that uh, well, we call it equal number of replicate, which means that uh, for each combination, okay, we have n prime observation, okay? Which means that if you talk about the question about the earning and the major, basically what we're doing is we are going to get say, M, say M prime before, okay? We are going to get four students, okay? From each faculty for each college, okay? So each, each, num, each kind of combination of the grouping have the same number, okay? This is not necessary, but for our purpose, it is simplify our calculation. And indeed in the, um, in the experiment, that is not a big deal, okay? Because you decide the experiment, right? Decide how many samples to take from each different treatment, right? There's a two way of treatment, right? In this one, right? So this is, um, in some sense, it's easier to do, right? Because why we care about this is historically it's about doing experiment in science lab, right? Because of, you may be different treatment, right? Because, because basically what you're doing, right, is you want to test some material, right? You have different type of material. You want to test the ANOVA, right? Testing how, say, how much they can endure, how much was the characteristic of this new material, right? And you do different of intervention. And sometimes you can combine things in two different ways, right? Say how many A, maybe how many, say iron, how many mercury, different kind of combination, right? That's why you can really control it in the lab. Okay, this is coming from the lab. So that's why everything is a very well control, but apply to business or the thing uh, or social science, then this equal number assumption may be less natural, right? And actually we can hand, actually we can uh, allow it to be different, but, uh, but the notation will be very messy, okay? So we just follow the book for our purpose, we just do this, okay? Uh, this can be generalized, but uh, we are making our life easy, okay? So what does that mean? Uh, it means that the two-way ANOVA uh, is more restrictive in terms of the, the data we are using, okay? So here is just like, this is the very complicated notation, okay? Is combine everything together, okay? This is means, the first group, okay, according to group, first grouping. Also the first group according to the first grouping, the first observation, okay? That means that you can imagine the B school, CC student, the first guy, okay? This is also a B school from CC college, the M prime student, okay? And this may be engineering school, uh, uh, NA college, first student, okay? And what we're doing is make sure that every combination of college, every combination of uh, college and uh, faculty have the same number of student and prime, okay? And we can, we are trying to do now is to see whether the college, uh, the income of the college student are different or they are, whether they're coming from different faculty, they're different. And also we want to see whether uh, different faculty, they combine have different effects, but I mean, we'll get getting more, more detail very quickly, okay? So this is data set. In the other word, look like this, data, okay? The data, this is data in the spreadsheet, so it means this is data we're working in Excel, okay? So you will see the data is like, okay, it looks like rather complicated, but let me, let me, uh, Convinced this is not very complicated, okay? So A, all this, okay? You can imagine all from the B school. 
okay? And maybe all this data are coming from say uh, art, right? And all this data may be coming from the engineering school. Okay, so each column means that they are from one group pane. Okay, and there's other type of group pane. Okay, let me use uh, I don't know red. Okay, so all this are coming for CC. Okay, and say all this. Are coming from the NA, okay, New Asia College. So that's why are uh, there two different way, okay? Each student have two type of identity. One is the faculty, one is the college, and we make sure that uh, this is uh, about is a equal replica, which means that uh, uh, the everything in the CC number of people in CC same as number of people in NA, okay? Number of people in uh, each faculty are the same, okay? Is a well balanced data. Okay, you do not over sample anything. Okay, make sure that every you can't in each dimension they're the same. Okay. Okay. In the other way, look at the contagion table. Is uh, every every entry the same? You have two way con. If a two way uh, contagion table, uh, then you have the same number for each combination. Okay. Is that clear? Is that clear what we're doing? Okay, this is a data set. Okay, you ask, it's very restrictive. Yes, it's very restrictive. Just uh, experiment allow you to usually you you do you do experiment like this. So, uh, but uh, but we as I said, we can relax. It's not big deal. Okay, so now let's go with the model. Okay. So the model you can see is very similar to what we have seen, okay? So basically it's each observation, okay? Is sum of two term, this is a constant term, and this is what we have a variable term, okay? This uh, mu ij, uh, is a normally distributed, okay? Uh, mu ij is uh, something constant, but we don't know where it is. We try to, we don't know it, but uh, there should be some constant. But this mu ij will be a normal, okay? It's a normally distributed. So it's normal with zero sigma square, okay? Uh, I don't think I explicitly write that out, but same as previously, we assume the variance is the same for everyone, okay? So same variance for different group pain. No matter which group pain, they're the same, okay? They're only different from the mean, okay? So to repeat it, again, let's make clear the assumption is uh, everything is normally distributed, okay? And everyone has the same variance, okay? And we are trying to see whether the grouping have different mean or same mean, okay? This is given by the grouping mu ij, right? Is whether uh, observation ijk is uh, mean mu ij. So what's two way here, okay? Two way, the main thing two way here is this guy can be written as this complicated subject, okay? Looks rather crazy, okay? But there's nothing, but just saying that you can say the mu is the, or the income, is the income of average income of CHK student. I don't care the college or, or the faculty, just the same number mu, okay? And alpha I, we say alpha was the, uh, their faculty, right? So alpha I is the faculty effect, okay? Faculty treatment, okay? Can be positive or negative, right? Maybe you go to law school or medical school, the alpha i is positive, right? B school, I think it's still positive. If you go to art school and social science, unfortunately, it's negative, right? So it's below the middle, right? So this is what it is, okay? And beta j are our effect from your college, okay? And maybe you are from NA or you are from CC or UC, 
maybe have a higher income than so or other college. I don't know. I mean, I have no idea about the data, but uh, but and do note that some of the alpha i are zero, some of the beta i are zero, the same as before, just whether the group will be go up or down, but on average, this group thing will be zero. And we have tau ij, okay? Tau ij is the interaction, we call interaction term, means that, okay, maybe you go to uh, NA or CC has no difference in income, or whether your B school student has no difference, but maybe, okay, being a uh, religious study in CC actually is better, okay? maybe because they are religious uh, history, right? Or uh, maybe you are doing uh, art in NA has some advantage because uh, the historical thing, the art, uh, the classical philosophy thing with the NA. So uh, there can be some uh, interaction, they call interaction effect. Okay, so maybe itself has no meaning, but they add up together will be very helpful, right? So, uh, for example, right, you go to nursing school, right? Maybe nursing school don't have any special income effect, maybe it may not earn different. And being a boy or girl doesn't make no difference. But being a boy in nursing school may be a, a benefit, right? Maybe there's just no, not enough boy to do the heavy duties thing or whatever reason you can be add up together can be helpful. Maybe there are too many girls there, so being a boy will be beneficial, uh, whatever, I don't know. Uh, that is the idea, okay? So basically it's no different from before. The only new added thing is, uh, you have one more term is called interaction, okay? Because the factor by itself may have no change to the thing, but they combine thing together, they add up, right? Just basically this is coming something like the chemistry, right? If you add certain thing there, I don't know whether anyone studied chemistry here, but maybe you add material, Maybe the fire triangle, right? So you add one material, have no, no change. Add two things, the other thing has no change, right? You combine the two, actually have something, right? Just like combination of the two thing uh, will be uh, very useful. So that is the uh, tau ij, okay? So the, you can imagine, you can see that what we're trying to do is to see whether the alpha i are zero, beta i are zero, or tau ij are zero. So basically we will have three different um, F tests. Okay, there's a goal of this chapter. Okay, so I don't know if we can cover any of the tests, but we'll try to give you the measurement first and then see if I can cover any test today. Probably not, but, uh, but basically you can see all the ANOVA already. Okay, so that's the idea. Uh, there will be three questions, right? The mean, the group by alpha the same, beta the same, or tau are the same, okay? And we will do the variance comparison, as we said, right? The idea is very simple. Again, right? Same as the before, you look at different grouping, look at the grouping to the center. Is this mean small? I just go back to here. There's no different from doing that. Let's go back to here. Okay, go back to this one. Uh, what are we looking at is looking at whether this SSG is small. Okay, well, of course, it's, this is a little bit with a different name, but that would be the idea. Okay, so. So let us look at all this crazy expression, okay? Uh, as I said, usually we never, we never actually touch this, okay? But I hope, it's not important for the formula, but I hope I can convey you what are they, okay? Because you will never, you will never calculate by hand anyway for this kind of thing, okay? But I, I hope you understand what's going on in this, okay? But that is not difficult actually. 
looks complicated. This grand mean, right? Just adding for each group I, group J, and adding all the observation and over N, right? But it's easy to understand what's going on here. Basically, just adding everything up divided by N. Okay, it's very simple because for each for each group I, okay, you go from each group I and go to each B, each thing, each observation, add up this, add up this, add, this, add up all the thing up, okay? So that is the meaning of the first item there, okay? Uh, quickly, let me finish this and then we're done, okay? So the next one is uh, I talk and J talk, okay? I talk and J talk is very simple. We just basically look at the mean of A and mean of B. So just here, I keep holding the I, okay? And sum up everything in a J and K, okay? So basically just uh, running everything from J to K. So basically it's like this. This is the mean of holding the one this is the one adding all up and divided by how many of them, right? Because this is M prime times R. So that's why this is the case. And same, you have adding all up divided by total number of them, okay? That is the X I dot, okay? And the other one, similarly, you can imagine the X dot J, right? X dot J will be like this, the color. So this X dot J, okay? X dot one will be this one, okay? And this is, and this last one will be X dot R. Okay? So uh, I probably you will see what's going on for the rest. So that's why I'm not going to force through because uh, uh, we already reached our goal. We finished one way or another. Uh, next week we'll do two way or another and uh, to not be an issue, okay? So I hope I convinced you this is, uh, we're done today, so I, it's over time. So uh, I'll see you. Thank you. Have a nice day. Just uh, remember the homework 12 days afterwards, so it's definitely